Hello everyone, and you may remember from uh, Saturday's video, I went to Military Odyssey and uh, bought a, uh, a number one Mark III frog for a number one Mark III bayonet and a Brody helmet liner. Well, I can now officially say the Brody helmet restoration has been complete. Just take a look at that. So, um, let's go over how much it all costed and where I bought everything from. So the helmet came from Reliable Source, eBay.com. Yeah, that's right, eBay.com. The, the bolt also came from eBay.com, that's a pre-production. I didn't have to pay anything for the chin strap as that came with the helmet. Spray paint also came from ebay.com as well. I'm just letting people know where you can buy this stuff as well. Uh, so don't worry about that YouTube. Um, the liner was from Military Odyssey, uh, Soldier of Fortune. And it's actually a nice reproduction as well. It's a decent reproduction. I've worn this helmet fairly few times and it's very comfortable and it's also uh, much more better than buying an original liner because the original ones are quite hard to find especially in a good shape like this so we're gonna let's also do a price analysis on how much everything costed so Brody helmet that costed about 28 pounds which is a little expensive. Bolt seven pounds because if I bought an original bolt and a nut, that would be fifteen quid. So, uh, chin strap didn't have to pay anything for. Spray paint was about eleven pounds, eleven thirteen quid. Liner was the most expensive bit, besides from the helmet. This was twenty five pounds. So all roughly coming towards that. It's about £19.92. If I got some of that wrong, please let me know. But yeah, got the got it it's all complete now and I love it. Although just a fair warning, unlike uh some Brody helmets, the uh, the gnat, this is the gnat, it goes in the other way. Instead of some of Brody helmets where they go in the complete uh, other way. I'll go ahead and grab an example of one. <coughs> My first World War Brody. It's got toilet roll in here because whenever I want to wear it, I don't want that. That's digging into my head. So as you can see, there's First World War. Well, that's what uh, that should not look like. That's what it should look like. Should not. Should as. And as you saw in the video when I tried to install it the uh, the other way, so it was like this. It wouldn't go in because in this cross piece here, there's a little indentation. Um, there's, yeah, there's a little indentation. And that's where um, that little ridge there on my finger is that's where that is supposed to go in that little indentation but yeah i now have three brody helmets you might be thinking but there's two of them there's a third one that's got to talk about. uh let me go There's the third one, <laughs> and these are all original shells as well. They're all very nice and original. This one is missing the liner, but has the chin strap in. This one was missing the liner, but had the chin strap in. This one 
was all complete post-war. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's take a look at the marking. So this one is a astounding... Oh, where is it? 1943. Spin it the other way. 1943, and then there's a 43, and there's a 1, and a 9's being covered up by that buckle. God's sake. I don't know what it's called. I'm just going to call it a chin strap retainer. But yeah, it's being covered up by the chin strap retainer. Uh, there's, oh, there is a manufacturer right there. And this Brody helmet would have been used for the ambulance drivers uh, at home. This one. The only, well, I'm technically classifying it as markings as well. We have a big marking up here, KFSR slash CP. And yes, some of the mud brown did go on the P, but that's fine. I might go over that in white paint. I don't know. And then we have none, no markings on the chin strap retainer. None at all. But we do have a one marking, which is right here. You can't see it because of the paint, but you can uh, B and B, Briggs Motor Bodies, one over 1939. So this is probably the first one <laughs> made in that year. And, um, no one knows what this helmet was. Uh, if someone can tell me what does KSR CP mean, please, I'd like to know what it means. But I've turned into a uh, army helmet. This one was at some point the first World War helmet. You can also tell the difference uh, between. So here's the first World War. It's pretty small. And here's the second. That's pretty big. So this is the Second World War, this is the First World War. I've already done a video on that. But yeah, this is the First World War helmet. Still has some of the uh, original First World War paint on the inside. And yes, I lied on that. Uh, but this was post, this is now been converted to post-war by the Belgians. Belgium after World War II they need helmets and there's actually a marking in the liner ABL 1949 XB 1950 58 which that's the marking on my uh, liner 58 actually it's a seven and a half liner so yeah depending on your head size the original ones they will say something like size seven my head fits into a size 7 liner. And uh, yeah. Of course, Belgium. So yeah. That pretty much wraps it up. I'm just giving a quick little update on the, on the restoration project. It is now all complete. There will probably be some extra content later. Yeah, thanks for watching.